Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with The Private Room. And tonight we have the King's Table, um, which is our all-male panel where we get together with professional men, um, men that are in the community, leading the community, um, and also business owners as well. So we have a nice panel tonight of several men that are um, out in the ministry, our ministers themselves, or our regular panel of, um, of panelists, where we're going to talk today about the subject of putting God first in your home and in your community. Um, we've talked about God and religion and how it it, how important it is for faith to be the leader of your home, be the leader when you're out in the community, and also the leader when it comes overall to just self and your family. And so we thought that we would take a moment to have a whole episode for us to talk about it. So tonight we have um, our regular panelists. We have with us uh, Mr. Delvon Harling, Mr. J.T. Thompson, as well as uh, Mr. Dion Wingate. And then we also have special guest Jarvis Swanson, who was with us uh, last month, I believe, and then also T.J. Austin. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our panelists, and we're going to let our guests introduce themselves. So we're going to start off with TJ. TJ, please introduce yourself to us. Tell us, you know, what it is that you do professionally. Let everybody know, um, you know, how, how it is for you and why it is that you put God first when it comes to home and community. So please start us off for the night, TJ. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. I uh, hope y'all can hear me okay. Well, my name is TJ Austin. I am currently the pastor of Abundant Life Ministries in Bessemer City, North Carolina. Uh, professionally, I am an entrepreneur, uh, the owner of Two Miracles Entertainment, which offers DJ services, photography. I'm also a published, two-time published author. I am a Christian hip-hop artist, two-time Queen City Award winner, Best Male Gospel <laughs> Artist of the Year. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff I'm trying not to leave out. Uh, currently, uh, my newest talent to the list, I am a writer and stage play director. So I got a whole lot, lot of list of stuff that I be doing. But most importantly, uh, I do love to celebrate, participate, and as well as be a part of our community. Anything uplifting, anything that is uh, going to help our young people. I have a heart for the young people, so I'm also in the community as well. You often see me doing uh, DJing and performing and all those things, but I'm definitely there to support our community. Uh, I believe the question was, how do I go about putting God first in the home and in the community? Well, I grew up uh, under a bunch of women. Amen. Praise God. I grew up by mamas and grandmamas. And so I didn't have a lot of male figures uh, to uh, show me the way uh, as a uh, God fearing man. So now as a God fearing man, I think that is vital that that role be detrimental to the home. Uh, I am a father of two. Um, baby girl just turned nine. Son is six. And so I think it is very important that they see a God fearing man uh, leading by example. And I think that is very detrimental to our young people, old people, middle aged people. Everyone needs to see in our community God fearing men. Yes, yes. Um, I to totally agree with you, um, especially coming up in a single parent home, how important it is to put um, God first in your life. I know that um, doing so has been a saving grace for a lot of people. Um, and I hear that a lot from um, a lot of men as well, um, which is one of the reasons why we're talking about it tonight. Um, so uh, tell me, how were you first introduced to religion? Was it something that your mom, you know, uh, practiced in your home or did that um, start for you once you left from mom's house? You know, how did that go? How, how did religion come into your life? Okay, uh, I think my story may be similar to a lot of people. I was raised in the church. Uh, I was under grandma. My old school used to say you used to get drugged at church. You know, you didn't, didn't matter if you wanted to go or not, you was going. So grandma used to take me to church all the time. Uh, but uh, my mother, uncles, you know, the older people in the family who were my elders, I think they was kind of tired of church. So it was just me and grandma for a very long time. And then uh, when I got to the age, you know, about teenage years where grandma didn't say you start smelling yourself 
you know, I started, you know, kind of going away from the church. But the scripture does say you raise a child in the way that he should go and he is old, he will not depart from it. So it was a decision that was made uh, for me uh, at age 19. Uh, I started to see and understand how important it was to live a God fearing life, to trust God wholeheartedly. And I saw the difference. I actually saw the difference in living uh, apart from God where it was when I was with my grandmother and I was living with God, even though I was forced, you know, as a kid, but, you know, as a young man and uh, even now as an adult, I see the difference and the importance of living a God fearing life. Good, 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 good. Thank you for sharing your background with us. Um, Jarvis, can you please introduce yourself to us? Yeah, I don't have as many hats as uh, Mr. TJ does. Um, <laughs> but uh, I am a, um, again, my name is Jarvis Swanson. Um, I am professionally, I am a uh, regional vice president for a um, healthcare company. Um, um, more importantly, I'm a husband and a father. Um, I, I'm also a published author. And then I am currently working on a new book series for young men, um, uh, 12 to uh, 20. And so it's going to be a series. So it'll be a, a kind of a book for each each uh, age group between those ages. Um, just trying to uh, help young men kind of navigate the, the, the trials of life and, and um, prepare them for that transition into adulthood. Nice, nice. Well, I know last time um, we had you on, um, we were talking about you being a best-selling first-time author, um, and you were very, very humble about that. Uh, a couple of times you kind of shied away from it and so forth and so on. So how is the book coming? Tell us the name of the book and um, how is the book coming? It's it's an image in a mirror three. Um, it's an anthology and it's it's um, eight gentlemen. We all kind of had a chapter in the book. Um, the book, you know, it, it continues to do 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 well. Um, it was for me. I it, it it was like opening a door into a world that I just didn't know. And so now it's kind of um, it's kind of like having that 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 first album as a as an artist. You kind of you break in and then now it's like what is your voice? Where do you want to really come from? What do you really want to talk about? And I think for me, um, just choosing, I really want to have impact. Um, and where I, what I hear a lot is I hear, uh, my sister saying, my son don't, doesn't have, like, he doesn't have anybody. And I think about myself when I was growing up and how there just wasn't a lot of, uh, strong male voices. Um, mm -hmm. I had some men, uh, around my life but not necessarily um men that were confident and knew where they were headed and could kind of give me some some guidance as, as to how to be um what what a god-fearing man uh, really is called to be and that's just responsible for the people um and and things in his sphere of influence and just um so now it's really trying to have that impact and teach that earlier not try to teach young men how to be men when they turn 18 because it really starts so much earlier than that. They need to be practicing at 12. So yes. that by the time they're 18, they're perfecting what they've been practicing. And now it's just about transitioning into adulthood. Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree with that. Um, I'm raising a son myself. And I, I completely agree. Ever since he can walk and talk, I've been teaching him how to hold doors, saying, you know, uh, making sure that he's respectful to his sister, to me, to other women, um, to himself, um, teaching him how to cook and stuff like that. So yes, it does start way before they turn 18. Um, and I think it's definitely important for, for boys to start that process as soon as they can understand and comprehend what you're, what you're telling them. So I totally agree with that. Um, so this is a new revelation. Um, last time we talked when you were be your first time best-selling author, I asked you, are you going to write another book? And you were like, oh, I'm not. <laughs> so now you are writing another book. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. And I'm glad that you are taking that step to um, to write again, especially to help the, our young men in our community. So tell us for you, when did, when did God become first in your life? What was that experience for you? Share that with us. So uh, similar to TJ, I grew up kind of going to church, um, and it was it was it was forced, um, and I think all the way up through through high school, it was you know it was my mother or my grandmother's church, 
Um, and so as soon as I was old enough to say then I didn't need that anymore, that was the decision I made. So probably like 17, 18, I, I stopped going to church for a very long time and um, proceeded to uh, make a mess of my life. And it took me until I was uh, 30 to really decide that, okay, I have to admit that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, mm. And that what I've really gotten really, really good at over the last uh, 12 years is making bad decisions. And once I had, once I accepted that, um, that I wasn't doing a good job and there was nothing, there was no decisions that I was making. It was going to bring me out of that because mm -hmm. I was going from making bad decisions to making worse decisions, um, to, to feel better about the bad decisions. Uh, once I accepted that that wasn't, that wasn't fixing it, then I was like, I, I, I'm going to go back to what my uh upbringing was and so i went back to god but this time i went back with um an understanding that he knows what he's doing and but i needed him to prove it to me prove to me that you can do something better with my life than i've than i've done with it and he is absolutely beyond my expectations giving me a life i would have never been able to dream of without him Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that background with us. Um, sounds like grandmas have had a big um, influence here so far. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go back to our regular panelists and get your ideas. Um, James, JT, please um, tell us for you about how important it is to have God first in your life, and how did you? When at what point did you make God first in your life? Share that with us. Um, I think for me, it came at an early age. Both my mom, um, my dad, and my grandmother were big influences on my life. Um, but I had to see some things in my teenage years that uh, brought revelation for me um, and brought me closer to God, um, showing me some things through some of the things that I was going through. And God showed me, you know, faith, uh, patience, and what a virtue that is. Um, but I had to stumble and, and, and fall and go through um, some experiences and yeah I mean like some of the you know the other guys didn't have a choice about going you know what I'm saying to church but that also instilled some things in me that I needed you know it's kind of like you know you tell yourself man you don't need a friend that's going to tell you what you want to hear you have a friend that's going to tell you what you what you ain't trying to hear and that's a good dose of what I got you know coming up so putting God first and everything became you know a natural thing for me. And, you know, and the importance of it was God showed me by action that you can't go wrong, just trust in me. And, you know, yeah, there were times just in human nature that I was like, eh, okay, yeah. But once you showed me and I got it, once you get it, ain't no turning back because you understand that, you know, that, that right there is one of the keys to life. And then in wanting to be a leader, you you got to incorporate that that faith that you know you can only get from when God speaks to you directly and he guides you through and leads you through and orders your steps. And those things I got, you know, I really got early in life. And so, you know, being a young man and and, and coming up and, and lucky to have a father in my life that basically showed me both the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I got all three. And so I got those things to build off of in order to, you know, also help me along the way. So those things, I think, just like the, the men that have spoken here tonight, filled me up so I'd be able to pour back into um, our communities, our youth. And those things, to me, are vital um in being a man especially in these days and times and especially in the conversations that we gotta have you know what i'm saying with not just our people but our young people too and keeping it all the way real and not sugarcoating nothing for them and just giving it to them straight like that that right there is going to you know prepare them for all the things that you know they're going to endure because you know this this life here ain't like what it was when we was coming up so God has equipped us with what we need in order to pour back in. So that's, you know, some of the keys for me.
I think you're on mute, Tiffany. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Sorry. Um, so my question was, um, I, there's a couple of different dynamics going on here. We have a single parent home. Um, we have our two of our guys who were our kings that were raised uh, by grandma. And now we have JT who said that his dad was in the home. So JT, was your mom and dad in the home or were you raised um, by dad in the home only? No, nah, I was I was blessed enough to have both of my parents um, in the home. And when okay. I said it, dad showed me a little bit of everything. He showed me the presence, but he also showed me what it is to not be present, but not be a factor as well. So I've seen gotcha. all of those things and those elements um, that, you know, sometimes people don't get all those sides, but I was able to see all of those things because there was a time where, you know, my pops was there, but he wasn't present. And so, and going through that, it also taught me some things that, I needed to get, you know, at those times. And there were some times that I needed him that he wasn't present. And those times were, you know, the times that I had to, you know, press my way through and get it, understand, you know what I'm saying, what exactly I needed and, you know, kind of steer my way on those paths. So, you know, yeah, I had both my parents and both of them were vital, um, but they showed me some things that I also needed to see that also helped me as a father and even as a husband. Right, right, got it, got it, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing that background with us. I think it's really important for people to kind of know where our conversations, that when we're, what we're talking about and kind of the background. So I think that's really important. So thank you for sharing um, your personal story and kind of your family dynamics. Um, Dion, please uh, tell us um, how, you know, you made God first in your life um, and how important it has been in shaping your life. You're on mute, babe. All right, good Thank evening, you. gentlemen. Um, like a couple of the other gentlemen, I was um, also raised by my grandmother and she did not force um, church on me, although we went to church. And that created a different dynamic in my belief system. So I, I wasn't um, partial to Christianity. So I was raised where I was just open to all types of uh, religion. So through that path, I went to the mosque, uh, to the Buddhist temple, uh, just exploring what would kind of work for me. Uh, I chose not to go the organized religion route, uh, which I think, you know, and I thank my grandmother for not just forcing me or uh, just making me believe just one way of thinking, not saying that any religion is wrong. I, I believe in everyone has a right to believe in what they want to believe in. Um, but through me, going through the different channels and having the ability and the privilege and the blessing to, to study just different religions. Um, they all, a lot of them all um, have the same value systems. Um, that's what I came to uh, realize. And I became more spiritual. Yes, I do believe there's a power greater than me. And that power does lead me and protect me too as well. Uh, so what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not um, biased towards one religion or the other. And as I said before, um, I respect all religions, whatever anyone believes in. But for me, myself, I'm more of a spiritual being. And that's, uh, you know, that, that was just my upbringing. I didn't come up in no... Um, Christian household, no Muslim household, no Jehovah Witness household, um, but I was aware of religion. Good, good. So I like the different perspective because um, we we were talking about God and religion and I had to catch myself because I think I remember you telling me that you were more spiritual than religious, but I had already, it already came out of my mouth. Out of my mouth. <laughs> so I'm glad that you um, you brought that up because there are you can have a faith in a higher being that can still be first in, 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 
and help you with being successful in your home and in your community without necessarily it being a, a God entity. So I'm glad that you brought that different perspective to us because you don't, it's not necessarily, this conversation is not necessarily about you have to believe in God, but it's just having, having faith in a higher power, having faith in something bigger than you, having faith in the, the realization that, you know, there, there, there is a higher calling, a higher being that can guide people. Um, and so I'm glad that you brought that perspective out. And so I apologize for the way I, I worded the question. Um, so for you, when it comes to religion versus spiritual, why did you choose the spiritual path versus the religious path? If you don't mind sharing. Okay. Um, during uh, the the religious class, um, I think it's just what it's called, organized religion. And my personal feeling is I can't gain spirituality through anyone else besides myself and my own beliefs. Um, because we are all flesh and we are all going to make mistakes because no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I believe in building within myself and in, in the higher, build, uh, higher being that I do believe in, um, it just works for me. Yeah. It's like therapy for me through meditation and I do pray. I pray for understanding and guidance and protection and wisdom and knowledge as well. But um, organized religion did not set with me in neither of the uh, uh, of, in none of the places or, or organized circles that I had been in. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see myself. Uh, no, let's just. Um, I don't want to offend uh, um, anyone. Or just you know, because of my personal, they're, they're just my personal views. Um, yeah. And what well, works this is for an me. Open platform, so we yeah. respect everyone's views. Yeah, so share that, what yeah. you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not easily offended, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not. So. <laughs> yes, but that yeah, is no, what no, the platform no, is all no, it about. Wasn't, it wasn't meant to. It wasn't meant their, to. It's, just, it's just, being being able to just respectful because I see that a lot of um a lot of the group are um are Christian based too as well. You know, um, I which I do that. respect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think it's really important that we have these different perspectives though. Um, and so just, just know that we're all adults here. We're all here expressing our truth and our truth is not always everybody else's truth. So um, I think that we're all you know, over, over the maturity age of being able to be respectful of other people's um, feelings, beliefs and stories. So um, we welcome whatever that is, including you know, your, your views. And so that's, that's why you're on the platform because I respect your views and I know that everybody else does. So, um, but I do appreciate you being respectful of everybody else. So that, that means a lot. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, were you, I thought I saw a hand raised in the thing. Okay. I'm not. Okay. So, um, Dwayne, can you please, um, come on and share, um, for you, how, um, you have made God, God first in your life your reason for doing so, kind of when you realized it. Um, and again, if that if it's not about God, what what is your source? What is your higher being? And share that with us. Well, God has always been first in my life. I've, I've been raised in the church. Um, I come from a two-parent family home. Um, my mother was an evangelist. Um, my father was not a churchgoer. Um, <clears throat> so my mom was the one who taught me about God and, you know, prayer and, and stuff like that. Um, I was the youngest in my family, so everybody else was pretty much out of the house. So I was, you know, the one that was going with her to different churches, you know, going with her to church all the time, um, every Sunday, every Wednesday night. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and whenever she had, whenever she had to go preach somewhere. Um, so God has always been first in my life. Um, I, I'll say this, God has always been first in my life, but I've had I've had times where I wasn't that involved in the church um, or I've had some time where I wasn't wasn't that close to God. And one of the things that really brought me back to God was the death of my mother. Um, 
when she passed away, I really got a better understanding because I got a better understanding of who my mother was. It took me to find out during her funeral or her wake how much she actually did for the community, um, how, she, how many churches that she actually, she was a true evangelist. So she went out of different churches and helped other churches get established. And the people that came to her wake were so grateful and so thankful that they had that they had her to help start her off. So I really gained a good understanding for her, uh, of what my mother actually did. Um, uh, the second thing that happened was my father died a year later. Um, after, after that, I became even closer to God um, because I was hurt. I was hurt. I didn't understand um, why my parents were, were taken from me at such a young age. Um, I was around maybe 24, 23 um, at the time. Um, I was just becoming a man myself. Um, I had already had two kids, um, two small kids. Um, and I would, I, I wanted my my parents to see my uh, my children grow up, um, get older. Um, so it hurt me to my heart when they passed away. Um, and the next thing was is that my sister passed away six years after that. So it was a lot of a lot of of hurt and questioning, you know, what my religion was you know, what I wanted to do with my life um, and how close I, I was with God at that point in time um, because I was lost. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was lost. I was, I had strayed so far away, but um, I couldn't deny what my mom had always put in me. Um, so I, I came back to the church. Um, right now I'm in a place where um, I still have God first. Um, it's because God has done so much for me. I'm very grateful. Um, I've had a, a, a scare on my life before. Um, I've almost lost my life. Um, so it, 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 it makes you, it makes you realize how, how important God is to you when you, when you go through certain things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I am sorry for your losses. That was a lot of losses in a short period of time. Um, but I'm sure, and it sounds like your faith is really what kept you going and kept you motivated and helped you to, you know, work through that grief and to move forward. Um, so I'm glad that you did have your faith to, to help you to do that. Um, so thank you for sharing that. That was very personal. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and last but not least, Mr. Delvon, um, tell us about your, um, where, when did you figure out or when did you decide to make God first and kind of what your background was? Well, just like some of these guys, I, I, I was definitely drugged in church by my mom and uh, being young, then you really, you, you you wanted to make sure that you, you know, wanted to make your mom proud. At the same time, you're trying to figure this thing out for yourself. Um, dad left at an early age, around 10. So figuring all of that out and figuring out how to, how to become not only a man, but just a boy. So of course I was in a lot of church activities. I sung on the choir um, and, Fast forward to about five years ago, you know, uh, I had organs to fail, so I needed a kidney. And I just didn't, I'm not one of those people that run to God just because I'm in a in a bind, you know. I felt like I have a unique relationship kind of off and on, but at the end of the day, I know who watches over me. I know who keeps me. I know who is, is, is whenever I'm sitting in the house by myself, I know who's, you know, rubbing my back and and, and giving me um hopes and and keeping me uplifted to 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 just see another day. Um it, it really got thick during the downs of my kidney failure. Um you really didn't have anyone to talk to like that. So you really had to spend not only days, but nights and just hours, even when I'm on a dialysis machine, me and him just having a conversation. And um, I'm here today. So yeah, um, God really kept me from 
losing it because, I mean, think about it. Us as men, we're proud. We're a proud species. And when it comes to our health, we feel like we're healthy. If we can get up and do what we feel like we need to do or want to do or have to do, we healthy. And which is one of the things that that kind of constricts us because we we don't go to the doctor like our women counterparts. You know, we 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 don't think about the doctor until we feel bad, bad, bad. And usually when you feel bad, 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 it's 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 far too late. So I um One of those things where God spoke to me and said, hey, you don't feel right. And, and that's when the discernment kicked in and that's when things started to shape and form and go into um, the, 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 the process of me stooping really low, but also he, he holding my hand and rubbing my shoulders and bringing me back to a high. And I still have my days, you know, we, we talk like homeboys. We talk like, you know, like, man, what you doing to me today? You know, like just, just, just regular old talk. And, 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 it took me a while to figure out when people say no God for yourself. If it, it took me a while to figure that out. And several, you don't really think about those scriptures you hear as a kid until you finally become of age. And when you when you experience certain things, and then when that scripture run past your mind, you're like, oh, I see. Okay, I get it now. All right. And you have times where you feel like, why God, or you aren't there and you can't get angry. You can get upset. You cannot believe. But then there's small little things that that if you catch it, you're like, oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. And um, I think that really made my discernment really strong. And 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 I I I I not only listen to God, but listen to my body, listen to all the things around me. My 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 vision is clear. I know this thing. And I feel like, you know, my grandmother passed away when I was young too. So I feel like she's watching over me and, and, and guiding me in directions and, and grabbing my shoulders and saying, hey, you know, this is, um, this, this is where you need to go and where you need to be. And this is how you need to feel. And this is how you're going to get through the day. Um, I find myself sometimes just randomly just um, feeling things. And it's kind of weird when you say it out loud, but you know who it is and, 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 I know who it is. And so, um, yeah, with me being right here right now is a true testament that God is real because I've, I've, I've met a lot of people who are going through the same situations and I try to instill that spirit in them and let them know that, you know, this, is, this, this isn't this is a death sentence. Having, having, your, having your kidneys fail is not a death sentence. Having your heart fail is not a death sentence. Just dig deeper in your faith, giving praise and, and, and giving praise in advance. Say through yourself that you are healed by his stripes and by his stripes, you will be healed. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I remember when you were going through, you know, your kidney failure and, ne and needing a kidney and it was really scary. Um, I know it was scary for me as your friend. Um, it was scary for the twins as your, your godchildren. And so um, it, it was very scary. And so I'm glad that your faith um, was a uh, healing for you, that it was a comfort for you and that you felt him enveloping you and keeping you safe. Um, well, you, had, so, you had to have faith because you just can't walk up in a 7-Eleven and say you want the third kidney to the back, you know. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> and we almost, and I'm going to be very, very honest. We thought we were losing you there for a minute. Um, and I know that that was, very scary, scary, not, not just for us, but I know is extremely scary for you. Um, I'm sure at times. Um, so, uh, thank you for sharing that part of your story with us. Um, I did notice that there were some things that took place in everyone's life. That's on the panel, um, life that's on the panel tonight that helped them reconnect with God if they strayed. So, um, one of my questions is, um, for those of you who feel that you ha you have that strong foundation with God, as it seems like all of you do, um, or a higher power, or you feel that you're you're connected to um, your spirituality, um, was there ever a time where you questioned your faith? And if so, share that with us, please. All the, all the time. <laughs> all the time. I I you know I'll be honest and say that even though I felt and believe that I was gonna survive this. You know, as a, we're, we're all human. 
you know, seeing is believing. So in the thick of it, you know, there were times I was scared to go to sleep because I didn't think I'd live to see another day. So I'm human, you know. I felt like this was going to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, you really have to believe. No matter what you see in front of you, no matter what's going on around you, you still have to believe. And that's the hard part with, I think, any religion. Because it's hard to believe when you can't see. You really have to, like, hope. And hope is 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 a dream deferred sometimes because you you know you know you hope it don't rain you know you hope you don't get in a car accident you, you, i mean you you hope you know what I'm saying this that and the third so you really have to remain faithful and understand that 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 somehow some way i'm going to get through this because god's going to provide yeah well they say that true faith is believing in the things unseen so we can't see god and we can't see you know we can't look up in the sky and say hey there's faith so you have to have that inner that inner understanding, that inner belief system. <clears throat> you have to have a good foundation to be able to have that faith to pull you through. Um, is there anyone else who wants to share like a moment where you felt like your faith or your spirituality was tested and how did you get through that? Or what helped you get through it? Um, I was actually incarcerated. Um, and during my incarceration, um, I had I had somewhat given up on everything, <laughs> you know, um, and I, you know, um, I gained comfort in praying and meditation. Um, I, when I got locked up, I was a alcoholic, um, along with a whole lot of other things. Um, but when I you know, began praying and building my relationship. Um, in the backstory, my mother, um, Pat, crossed over when I was four. Uh, but strangely, while I was incarcerated, I built a relationship with her. I um, began writing, writing her and, you know, just asking all the questions that I want to ask, asking her why she had to leave me you know, because of the things that I went through um, with her being gone. And through that, you know, I, I found myself writing letters to everybody that I knew that I wronged. And I know, the, I know that was nothing but spirituality right there. That was nothing, you know, because I never thought about that. Um, it even went as deep as rude things that I had said to someone that I didn't even know. Wow. Because um, I had nothing but time, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I like to call it, I had like an epiphany. I just broke down and, um, you know, I, I can't I can't describe the feeling, but uh, here we go. Like uh, two decades later, I still haven't had a drink and whole mindset changed when I got out. So I know that definitely there's a power greater than myself. No question about that because of those experiences. And I like to share that with everyone, even me working in a corporate space, I like to, you know, a, a lot of them don't believe that, geez, yeah, you, you, you've been through this for real? And yes, I have. Um, mm -hmm. I even wrote a book about it, <laughs> you know, so I could be completely transparent uh, about that and hopefully help someone gain that spirituality because my book is focused and spiritually based. So whatever you believe in that helps you get over that bridge or whatever connection you have spiritually, spiritually um, and works for you, that's, that's amazing because it all boils down to spirituality, to being spiritual. Um, and that's just my belief. I believe that's what a personal relationship. I think, um, I think Jarvis uh, and, uh, had mentioned a personal relationship. And that's that's extremely important. And I feel as though no one can build that relationship for me but me. Uh, because when I was in that cell, I was by myself. And I had to look look at myself. And you know, uh just going through that, I can't I can't really explain the feeling. I know it was a spiritual moment. I can't explain the feeling. Um, and from that day forward, it's nothing for me to sit and write a letter to my mother, let her know how her grandchildren doing and how, 
you know, how my life going, whether it's good or bad, and just being completely transparent. Uh, so um, I know that there's definitely uh, a high power. I love that. I love that. I never thought about the writing the letter to your loved one to share. Um, so I love that. Um, my father passed away in 2014. And a lot of times I say to myself, I wish he was here. I wish I could talk to him so forth and so on. So thank you for that. I think I might try that. That's a, a, a an excellent way to stay connected and to, you know, to really get your feelings out to someone that you wish or want to still be there. Thank you for sharing that. That that is amazing. <laughs> um, so thank you, thank you. That 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 meant that's meant a lot to me for you to share that. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that. Would anybody else like to share when they felt like their faith or their spirituality was tested, and how did you how did you get through that? I'll go. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just didn't know. Um, I'll probably say my faith was mostly shooken um, when I became ill, um, when I had diabetes. Well, I, I kind of still do have diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I had never um, had any kind of um, um, signs of di uh, diabetes. Nobody in my family had diabetes. Um, it wasn't like I was, you know, um, eating really unhealthy. Um, it wasn't like I ate a lot of sweets or anything like that. I mean, on the contrary, I did eat a lot of sweets. I had one sweet too. My, my only vice is gummy bears. Um, as far <laughs> as that, uh, that's my only vice. Uh, <laughs> um, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. But it, I developed the diabetes and it was a shock because, um, I, I didn't recognize the signs. Um, the only way that I knew something was wrong is because I had a domino pain. It was hurting for about a week. And then I started going blind. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, um, I couldn't see the TV. I couldn't see, you know, anything close up. Um, mm -hmm. And so I knew something was wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Went to the hospital and they told me that, you know, what my glucose level was. My glucose level was so high. They said that, you know, was I confused when I came in there? They said most people that come in with a glucose level that high are usually you headed for stroke, mm. um, stroke level. Um, mm. So it was extremely high. And I just didn't know what I was going to do as far as that. I thought that was it um, because I, I didn't think I could, you know, do insulin every day. Um, um, I don't like needles, still don't to this day. Um, mm. uh, whenever I go to the, the doctor's office and they have to draw blood, um, I always ask them to give me a sticker. That's my coping mechanism. Mm. So I know that there's a prize at the end of it for me getting stuck. So <laughs> that's, and that's, it's odd, but as a grown man, you got to do something like that. Um, but I just, I just didn't think I could, I could do it. I, 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 I there was no way that I could stick myself every day and, and have this feeling every day. It I wouldn't wish diabetes on my worst enemy. It's a mm -hmm. it, it's an awful feeling um, to go through. Um, mm -hmm. But I prayed about it. Um, my family prayed with me, um, and I asked God to 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 help me. I asked God to assist me. Um, I asked God how was I gonna make it? How can I do it? And I left it in His hands. Um, and to this day. Um, I still have diabetes, but it's a lot better. Um, my A1C has gone from 11.6 down to 5.9. And <laughs> diabetes, it's to not have diabetes, it's anywhere between 5 and 5, 5 and 5.5. 5. So I'm around mm -hmm. the range I'm supposed to be at. Um, I've lost, you know, weight that I didn't know I needed to lose. Um, mm -hmm. I've lost 25 pounds. I've got on a better diet. And I can honestly contribute that to, to what God has done in my life. Um, he, I've asked and he's given. Nice. 
Nice. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I remember you shared that story with us um, before. Uh, I'm not sure if it was on this panel or something else that we did together, but I do remember you sharing that um, before. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so I've, I've, I've heard a couple of patterns. I always like to pull out the patterns in conversations. Um, so, you know, we had some, some health crisis, um, incarceration, you know, just um, some, you know, a couple of other uh, patterns that we're seeing here, you know, throughout our conversation. Would anybody else, we'll, we'll take one more, anybody else want to share when their um, faith or spirituality was tested and how you got through it? I will. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, it was just that. It was actually a test. It was several tests. Uh, so for me, as I said earlier, you know, I, I made a decision around 19 years old uh, to come back to church, come back to God, and really get serious with my spirituality. Uh, similar to uh, Brother Dion, uh, I faced incarceration. And you know how we do when we're scared. We give that prayer, you know, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never <laughs> do it again. Right? right? But my test was not for him to get me out of it. My test was for, for me to go through. So I spent almost 10 years of incarceration in that 10 years. Uh, I lost my spiritual, uh, my, my spiritual rock. I lost my grandmother. Uh, I lost my mother. I lost my younger cousin who was like a brother to me all while being incarcerated. And so for me, uh, that was the time when my faith was tested the most because I was in a place where God, religion, spirituality these things are last on the list you mm -hmm. know first on the list is survival right uh, uh, close second is cliques gangs um you know all those type of things uh god is absolutely last on the list so for me it was like hey god said okay you really say you're gonna do what you're gonna do let's see how hard you go in here because it's easy to do that stuff in church. You know, we got all the church cliches. We got the mannerism down. We know when to say amen, when to stand up, when to sit down, when to lift your hands. We know all that. But he said, let's do it in here where nobody else is talking about me, where nobody, there is no God click. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of times you are by yourself. Like the brother said, like brother Dion said, you are in that cold concrete cell by yourself. And one of the old, saying, old sayings that the saints often have, like, you wasn't there. Like, you don't understand what those conversations was like. You don't understand what those tears were like. You, uh, There's no way to describe, uh, like the brother talked about, that personal relationship when God said, I got you, when nobody else got you. We're going to get through this. When nobody else believes that you can actually get there. When you don't believe, you're going to get through this. So for me... That was the test. That was that was my my breaking point. And that was when God said, either you're going to do it or you ain't. And, you know, thank God, my part of my testimony today is that I was able to trust God for almost 10 years, you know, behind a wall and was able to continue to live that life and continue to show people, be a testimony to others, you know, when I got out of that situation. So for me, you know, that was the test because it would have been easy to fall into all these other crowds and do all these other things. But it was oftentimes when I had to stand alone with just me and God. Yes. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. Um, I can't imagine. I don't think I would make it in jail. Me personally. I don't think I could. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so honest. I, I applaud anyone who shares their story, you know, of being incarcerated, especially for a long period. 10 years is a long time. I don't think I can make it 10 days. I'm going to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll be crying in there like a baby and I'll be somebody's wife. I don't know. I, I don't know how that I would make it through that. So for somebody, for all of y'all to, you know, those that have been incarcerated and, and are sharing that part, I applaud you for making it through. And I'm glad that your faith was that um, strength that you needed to get through that because I hear horror stories that happen, um, you know, behind bars. Um, I have a cousin right now who's serving a life sentence and, you know, talking to him and being in him still being in good spirits and still seeing him being able to smile, um, getting letters from him, you know, him text messaging me. I have no idea how he's texting me while he's in there, but he does. Um, and so I know that a lot of him getting through while he's fighting, you know, to an appeal after appeal that keeps getting denied is his faith. So um, I really give y'all a lot, a lot <laughs> when it comes to that, because I couldn't do it. I, I, I know I couldn't do it. And I know that that's something that's very hard to get through. You have to have a very strong inner strength 
not not just your faith, but inner strength as well to be able to get through that. So I applaud y'all on that, and especially for sharing it um, in a public um, platform like this. Um, how many of you are husbands? Can I get a raise of hand? How many of you are husbands? We're going to talk about home for a second. All right. So those of you who are husbands, not discrediting the rest that are not husbands yet, but those of you who are husbands, tell me how is putting God first helpful in your marriages? I'll, I'll, I'll start us off. Um, I think in our culture, it's hard for two people to, you know, we're both raised up to have dreams and visions for what our life can and should be. And it can be very challenging to figure out navigating when do we go, when is it our our turn as a family to push your dream? And when is it our turn as a family to push to push my dream? And so really having God as that foundation um, for, for, for my family, it is allowed, um, it has allowed him to establish me as the leader in our home. Um, and it's not based on me uh, walking around clapping up dominance. It's, it's God positioning me in a, in a place where I'm first to the sacrifice. I'm first to put everyone else first. And then, mm -hmm. so when it's time for my wife to do that, she's seen me practicing that. Uh, she's seen me practicing submission in my relationship with Christ. So it makes mm -hmm. it easier for her to choose submission in her relationship with me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's, that's he, my relationship with Christ has become my foundation for all of my relationships. And so because of, of um, how he has loved me, into a submission submitted place to his authority um it's very easy for my family to come under my authority yes i like that i like that they say that um the head of christ is god the head of the household is jesus and god and then the head of head of head of the house is is the husband so i'm glad that you um are able to feel that support from um you know, your faith and your God and that you are able to submit to that leadership so that your wife feels comfortable being able to submit to you. And I think that's really important as a woman for me to be able to, um, I, I, even though I, I feel that I'm a modern woman and I'm all about women's, you know, fight, power and empowerment and so forth. I still have a very um, traditional view when it comes to the household. And I, I feel as if I learned that from my parents, by my father himself, um, he believed in God, but it, he didn't really embrace God until I was maybe uh, nine, ten-ish, um, but he always was respectful of the fact that my mom took me to service and taught me about God and um, taught me that foundation. He was always respectful of that, um, and because of that, but supporting and backing my mom and supporting and backing her, you know, teaching me about God and the Bible and so forth and so on. He was respectful of her and you know what she was teaching me, and in return. He was a good provider. He, we, we never wanted for anything. We always had everything that we needed. Um, and that gave my mom the, the, the position and the, the faith and the confidence in him to be a wife and submissive to him. So um, I learned that at a very young age. You know, they had their problems, every marriage does. But I still, to this day, feel that the man of the house is the man of the house, and he's the head of the household, um, regardless of what we go through. And so I really appreciate that you recognize that um, and that your wife is able to do that as well. Um, you always talk very, very highly of your wife. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, I, I truly appreciate that. I got tears coming into my eyes because I just think it's one, it's so beautiful to hear a husband talk very highly of his wife. Um, and every time I talk to you, you always speak very highly of your wife and you bring her up in almost all of our conversations. So um, shout out to you for doing that. And please let your wife know that uh, that I would love to meet her one day. <laughs> Absolutely. You speak to her. Absolutely. Well, I'll say this though. She is my example of how much God loves me. And so 
I try to honor her and keep her in the position to where that that flow is always coming out of her because that he is she is my model of his love. That's beautiful. So I'm always trying to keep her flowing. Yes, that is beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And if she doesn't know that, and or you haven't said that to her verbally, I would encourage you to say that to her verbally so she can hear that again. It's always nice to hear how our husbands or our our, our the men in our lives feel about us. So share that with her. <laughs> put that um, in my notes. I'm re- we renewing our vows in September, so I'm gonna. I'm going to put that in my notes. Put that in there. Then you can say at the end, thank you, Tiffany, for telling me. Right. That <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, would any of our other husbands like to um, add to that question? How How is putting God first helpful in your marriage? Because I, I can speak about mine. Um, men, uh, we set the tone. And what I realize is that that energy transfers. So with me having strong spiritual belief, I feel like even what may seem to others as a bad situation, I may look at the I look at the positive side of it. So with me never panicking and finding the positive in a negative, that trickles, that trickles down. It could be a lot of things going on, but if I could pull the positive out of that. My household is still calm, regardless of that, because of my faith that everything is going to be okay and everything's going to work out, actually, Mm -hmm. due to um, my beliefs. Yes, yes. I appreciate that. Keeping, making sure that you always see the positive in everything and knowing that you're you're going to come out on top. That's that's a good principle for your home and for your family. Um, And I'm sure that's reassuring for your wife as well to, to know that you're, you, you're always going to see the positive in things. So that, that should be, I'm sure is comforting for her when y'all might be going through a trial, knowing that y'all are going to get through it and you're going to, you're going to come out on top. So that's, that's a great principle. Very great principle. Um, JT, I see you came off of mute. Um, how does God, Scott, um, putting God first help in your marriage? Um, it gives it balance and also going through leading by action. I can definitely say when I experienced what it meant uh, and what it really feels like to death do us part, when I experienced that, that brought even more revelation to what it means to be a strong husband and leader. And so Mm -hmm. leading, you know, applying that in your household, not just speaking it, but showing the action of that and understanding that, you know, my wife is a praying wife faith you know faith based but it's all the energy bouncing off of what you know the things that i'm saying and the things that i'm doing and understanding that we don't walk individually we walk as one and incorporating that as one and knowing how powerful that is and it doesn't mean that every day is a perfect day but it means that you know what we in this thing together we taking this journey together we walk together we walking you know, not one ahead of one another, but walking side by side and an understanding that we are each other's encouragers, we each other's confidant, we each other's best friend, knowing how important that communication is. And when she if she looks to me, she knows that she is safe, secure, and understands that, you know, if it's when it's placed in my hands, I'm going to make the best decision possible because I'm looking to God for those answers, for those guidance. It's not anything about self. It's not anything about me, you know, saying, oh, I'm king, I'm this, I'm that. It's staying humble and understanding the assignment. And those things, I think, are keys. And to be honest with you, Tiff, showing respect. If you want respect in this life, man, you got to give it and show it to the utmost. And when you do those things, Things are going to work in your favor. And even even in times where you're going through the storm, you understand that your faith and and how you build spiritually is going to bring you through because you know that your spiritual being is powerful. And when you are walking in accordance and in obedience and, and, and doing things the right way, God is going to give you the tools needed in order to get through. And, you know, I truly believe that. And also, from from man to man and every king on this panel, 
you don't think it's 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 um something to love on your wife, uplift your wife, encourage your wife. It ain't just you know happy wife, happy life. It's <laughs> happy as one and knowing how to move and love on each other and encourage each other to be the best version of yourself. All God given truth. Nice, nice. Well, I don't know about that not happy life, wife happy. No, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. <laughs> Oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, balance, yes, is definitely important um, in a relationship. But um, going to God when you're making those tough decisions. And I like that you said that it's not just about you, that it's not a me thing, that I go to God first and I make the decision that's best for my household. So I, I appreciate that. That's that's a, a great concept. That's a great um, thing to do or a great principle to have in your marriage to know that it, this is not about me. It's not just about me. It's not about JT. It's not about James, that this is about my family, but I need to go to God first when I, before making these decisions. So that's a very good principle to have in your home and your marriage. Um, Dwayne, um, I know you're also married. Tell us how having God first in your marriage, um, helps. Um, having God first in my, and having God first in my, in my marriage helps. Um, because it gave me a better communication. Um, you know, I've told this story a couple of times since I've been on here. My story is I've been married four times. Um, <laughs> I've been married four times. And uh, this one, my last wife is, is is my last wife. I know for sure. Uh, not because I won't ever get married again. It's because, <laughs> you know, she is the one that I've been waiting for. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it, it only came about because I, I had a, I got a good communication with God. Um, like I said, once I got out of, you know, so many marriages, I had to do some self, self evaluation with myself and see what was going on. Um, talk to God, you talk to somebody else, um, and you find out that, um, you know, some things may not be what you think it is. And that's another thing. What, what, what you also find out is that it gives you discernment. Um, uh, discernment is it's very critical in a marriage because, um, you're viewing it from a human eyes. And if you pray about it and ask God about it, he'll give you discernment to figure it out what's going on in your life or what's going on in your marriage and they can better communicate with, with your partner, whoever they may be. Um, so that's that's how it affects my my marriage and you know any kind of relationship um, I have. Nice, nice. I like that. Communication is so important. Um, if y'all can't communicate to one another, then everything else breaks down. You know, you you can't you can't take care of the household together because you can't communicate. You can't have intimacy because you can't communicate. Um, you can't make decisions together, you know, because you can't communicate. So so many things uh, break down when you can't talk to one another and you can't be respectful respectfully talk to one another, like JT said. So yes, very very good principle, very very good. Um, real quickly because we're about to run out of time, but I want to make sure we get all of our points in when it comes to community, leading the community. Um, TJ, are you there? I want to make sure. Oh, yep, there he is. So TJ, for you, I know that you're active in the community. How does having, um, you know, faith in God and putting God first, how does that help you as a community leader? Uh, it helps because it gives uh, so much insight on how to deal with uh, different people with different backgrounds. Uh, a lot of times uh, we think that everybody has our same story, that everybody just kind of walked the same path. You know, we all black, we all this, we all that. But a lot of times everybody uh, that I've come in contact with has a different story, uh, has a different outlook, has a different view. So for me personally, uh, my faith has definitely given me a lot of patience uh, and a lot of uh, preparation uh, to deal with people in that capacity. You know, I don't want to come off as this Bible totem guy, like, if you ain't doing it this way, it ain't right. But, you know, a lot of times you have to meet people where they are. You know, a lot of people are not ready uh, to walk the path that I'm currently walking. A lot of people just ain't ready to just step in church and just jump right in and have a great time. A lot of people mm -hmm. need guidance. A lot of people need you to, you know, walk them through the process, hold their hands. And what I've learned uh, most importantly when dealing with community, people just want you to be there. You know, mm -hmm. they they know your background. They People look you up all the time. You know how we do. We go to Facebook, <laughs> we click the, click the uh, icon. We go see who your friends are, what school you uh -huh, went to. Uh -huh. People know your background. They know who you are. So, you know, you don't have to beat them over the head with it. You know, a lot of times they just want to know that you're there. Hey, look, man, we dealing with 
this, this, that, and other, but Rev came out. You know, we dealing with this, this, that, and other. But the brother came out. You know, he didn't preach. He didn't do this. He, did, he was just there for support. And a lot of times, that's what people need in the community. They just need to know that the community is backing them, that our leaders are backing them. You know, a lot of times I go places and I intentionally stand in the back. You know, I don't want the microphone. I don't want to be up front. But people will see and they be like, oh, man, I saw you at such and such, ma'am. I'm glad you came out. And that means a lot. So when the opportunity does come where I can hold a conversation with them, that alone has set me up to be in their good graces. You know, they're not standoffish. You know, they're not, oh, here you come. You know, the preachers only come out when it's this, when it's that, and other. But, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we see his brother all the time. You know, he don't right. say much. He just there. And they appreciate that. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Just, um, I hear that a lot. I'm a social worker and we say that a lot, that we want to meet people where they are. We don't force people to do anything that they're not ready to do. And we meet people where they are. We, we, we connect with people where they are in their life right now. Um, so I like that you brought that point out. But then also just being present. You don't always have to be in the, in the spotlight. You don't always have to have the microphone. You don't always have to be the headliner. Um, you can be present and still make an impact. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that point out. Um, Dell, you're a teacher, but you're also in the community as well. Tell how putting God first um, has been helpful for you as a community leader. <laughs> Where do I start? Sometimes you have to uh, use God in mysterious ways in order to get through to some of these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. God really has to walk with us through these hallways in order for us to keep our jobs in times. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I know I use God for a different purpose and it's just to help me help these kids see their potential, which is um, very hard because a lot of these kids, they don't have the vision to see their future. They only, mm -hmm. see, they only see what's in front of them right at this moment. They don't know what's gonna happen in the next five minutes from the, um, the next five minutes in their future. So um, I lean on God every day. We have a nice little conversation when I'm on the way to work. We have a little nice conversation. We have a nice conversation when I get to work. We have a conversation when I leave work. Because if I didn't have that, I would have been fired a long time ago. <laughs> um, God is definitely essential to just maintaining my peace. And there's one thing that I do want to add um, to all the married men. I envy you because hopefully I want to be in that uh, that that uh, fraternity someday. So I do, you know, pray to God and ask God to send me a woman who's, you know, I won't say on my level, but, you know, about peace. Because as black men, we're in this community each and every day. And we definitely need God because we want to go home to our families and whatever's waiting for us at home. So um, I do, you know, hold faith and I hope one day that, I, that I'll be a, a super dope father and, 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 and husband someday. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my two cents. Oh, listen to Dale wanting to be a daddy and a husband. <laughs> I love that. You're I don't know. I'm old, man. I don't know. It might not happen. It might not happen. <laughs> it'll happen it'll happen when the time is right when god sends you your your woman to you it will happen it will happen if that's what you desire you will have it at 70 <laughs> oh no it's okay it's okay you got this you got this but you in the meanwhile in the meantime you can come get these twins and bring them down there to, 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 to and down there and then and, and be oh, yeah. daddy to them for a little while so <laughs> Um, but thank you. Thank you for sharing that, that you use um, uh, God in, in the ways to help you be patient, but also to help people see the power of God in, in their lives and in their future. So I, I like that. I like that. Um, I know all of y'all are in the community in some way, shape or form. So let's get one more comment on how um, putting God first or your spirituality first helps you to be a better community leader. I'll go. So um, putting God first has helped me uh, become a be better advocate um, because Jesus was an advocate for the people. Um, so it helped me advocate for people who uh, I'm not that I'm not going through that same situation. Um, it helped me be more um, 
empathetic and sympathetic as well. Um, mm -hmm. And being an advocate, you have to be that way um, because you're going to hear somebody else's problem and you're going to have to figure out how to help them, but you have to figure out how to help them and not be um, let's see, harsh with it. Um, it's a, it's, it's, it's a delicate situation when you're advocating for someone else and that needs help, um, that needs um, to get out of their situation. So this it's helped, it's helped me definitely that way. Yeah, yeah. To clarify, um, when Dwayne says that he's an advocate, he's a domestic violence advocate and author um, that you know teaches people about um, domestic violence, um, how to 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 get out of domestic domestic violence relationships safely, but then also educates people on what what is domestic violence. How do you identify domestic violence and learning the different types of domestic violence? Because domestic violence is not just physical. It's not just about getting a black eye or a busted lip or being thrown down the steps. It can be verbal. It can be it can be spiritual. Um, it can be financial. So he educates people about domestic violence um, in a way. For people to understand plain English, not a bunch of technical terms. Um, and so his book, The Ripple Effect, talks about, um, you know, domestic violence and educating about domestic violence. And it really goes in depth about what domestic violence is and how to advocate for yourself and others. So um, that's one of the, the ways that we were first connected was through um, the, the, the DV community and both being advocates. So thank you for, for that. And um, we need more men in that space of, um, you know, educating and, and raising awareness awareness about domestic violence. So thank you for your service um, in the community as well. So um, I want to make sure that everybody shares their, um, their contact or their social media so that people can reach out to you and connect with you because y'all, I believe everyone on here are business owners. Um, we have a couple authors on, on here. Um, we have a couple of ministers on here and y'all have a lot to, to contribute to the community, to people's businesses for you know insight as well. But then also the big announcement is that this is our last King's Table. So I um, have a very strong connection or a very strong um, passion for talking about um, relationships and, um, and intimacy, and I'm an intimacy coach. Um, so I have been doing another panel, Relationships and Sex Talk, where we talk about the different dynamics of relationships, um, you know, different topics related to relationships and intimacy and sex. Um, and that that's where my passion has been um, for about two years now, um, and especially with helping um, couples with reconnecting, whether they're married or just in a, a long-term relationship, but how to connect and just, you know, re, re, rejuvenate and reignite the spark in your relationships. And so that's really my passion. And it's also a special to me, specialty um, for me um, as a, as a, as a therapist as well um, as a coach. And so I'm gonna be turning the private room fully to um, my relationships panel. That does not mean that you are not gonna see these Kings again, because as topics come up, um, I will be reaching out to um, the Kings. I'll also be reaching out to the, pe the panelists that were on the single parents corner to invite y'all to some of our talks because it might be something that you're passionate about that you've mentioned that you're interested in talking about. Um, and I will, I will continue to reach out and support y'all. Um, I will be doing some special um, topics throughout the year that are related to men specifically. So of course I'll reach back out to our Kings table panelists um, for those opportunities as well. So I want to thank all of y'all for your contribution. I've been um, doing an all-male panel for a couple of years now, and um, I know JT and Dwayne, y'all have been there for all of it. Um, so I really appreciate y'all's support, um, continued support, and I know that y'all will continue to support as I'll support all of you. Um, so that is my big announcement. Um, and so I wanted to put that out there and thank all of you um, publicly and personally, because you all do mean so much to me. Um, y'all have taught me a lot. Um, as a woman, as um, someone who believes that men have a, a strong voice and a very big influence in the community, and especially in the home as head of the household. Um, so I really appreciate y'all sharing your stories, um, sharing a lot of personal things, um, sharing your expertise, your business, and so forth. So I thank y'all so much. I'm going to go one by one. Please tell us how people can find you on social media. I'm going to go in order as I see it. It might not be the way you see it. So Jarvis, um, if you can tell everybody how to find you on social media. Sure. So uh, you can catch me on IG at uh, Coach J Ivan. 
Um, and then you can uh, check out, uh, we have a um, uh, vintage and um, vintage men's store. It's at Mosaic Artifacts. That's mm -hmm. on IG as well. Um, okay. We do vintage men's clothing and home goods. Um, okay. Kind of from like a mid-century modern perspective. Nice. Give me that again, because I'm about to put that in the comments so I can look that up. Tell me, give me that one more time. Vintage at, what? It's at Mosaic Artifacts. Okay. And we do so vintage men's apparel, vintage men's wear, and home goods. Okay. And is the social media is at? What? At Mosaic Artifacts. At Mosaic Artifacts. Got it. Mosaic Artifacts. Got it. Got it. I am definitely going to look that up. So there's a couple of things that are coming up under Mosaic Artifacts. So if you could do me a favor and put it in the chat, the link in the chat, that way I'm tagging or putting the 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 right one. I don't want to send business to somebody else's page. So if you can put that in the chat and I'll make sure that I put it in the thread on the live on our Facebook page so I get the right one. Thank you so much, Darvis, for being with us. And please tell your, your beautiful wife hello for me again. And I would love to meet her sometime soon. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Dion, tell us how um, everyone can find you on social media. Um, Dion Wingate under everything. D-I-O-N. W I N G A T E. My website is F N O four, the number four life uh, dot com. And Thank you. It, okay. I want to ask a question. Any of you brothers in the um, Wake County area, um, we're having a 5K Walker Run Minority Mental Health event. So um, if any of you guys want to, um, Saturday, the 22nd from 9 to uh, 1 p.m. at Anderson Point Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, if any, any of you gentlemen want to uh, volunteer uh, or the, the event is totally free, or just come support or come speak because I know we have a lot of mental health specialists or people who dealt with it on this panel too as well. Um, and that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Dion, if you can send me um, any information on that, links, flyers, or anything like that, I will make sure to um, to share it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jarvis. I see your message, and I'll make sure I plug that in on the thread. Um, JT, you're next. Um, tell us your social media. Yeah, it's um, James Sherman Thompson on Facebook, JT underscore, and Big Wool Radio on IG. I'm at JST Productions on Twitter, JT at BigWooRadio.com for the email, BigWooRadio.com, everything um, as far as reaching out um, to Dion, Devon, Dwayne, Jarvis, Moine Breeze. It's been an honor to rock out with y'all in this, in this last King's uh, episode and session. Um, near and dear to the heart to be able to um, have an impact and inspire with two brothers. I know what we came to do when we understood the assignment. So I salute each of y'all and look forward to collaborating with y'all somewhere down the line on this journey again. And to Tiffany, again, you already know, I ain't hard to find. We rock out, we rock the long way. And anything, anytime, and anything that you need from me, I ain't but a touch away. You take care of God bless on everything. Everything that you touch is gonna turn into gold and be what you want it to be and rocking your favor. So always keep that first and foremost. Um, mm -hmm. Salute on everything as well. Thank you. I appreciate that, uh, JT. We have we collab a lot. And so I know that we'll continue to do that. And I appreciate you um, very, very much. Um, I got your, um, your flyer, Dion, so I'll make sure that I post it. And that goes for anybody. If y'all have any upcoming events, flyers or anything, please drop it um, in the chat or uh, email it to me, text it to me, and I will make sure that um, I post it. Um, Delvon, tell everybody how to find you on social media. Uh, it's DJ SHOK803. Everywhere, DJ S H O K eight o three, and um, if you look at that bottom left corner, my name Delvon D E L V O N H A R L I N G. That's my Facebook. Nice, nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Dwayne. Tell us how to find you on social media, including your book link, please. Sure, I want to say um, it's definitely been a pleasure um, uh, meeting with you guys. Um, some of them I know um, previously, um, like Dion, 
Um, me and Dion were together, and Tiffany, we always were together. Um, she knows she can call me on anything, and I'll show up. Um, but it's definitely been a pleasure. And I just want to say, um, you guys, you know, let's keep in contact. Um, the last time I was on a men's panel, um, I said that before. And one of the guys that I promised that I was going to keep in contact with passed away. So I want to throw that out there, guys. So let's let's try and keep in contact, you know, some kind of way. Um, and, you know, st stay up with each other, encourage you encourage each other because we we do need that sometimes it may just be you know just a hey how you doing or something else um but you know please stay in contact um anybody can find me on on facebook or instagram at c duane hennett um my website is c duane hennett um two um you also can find my book um the ripple effect the lasting effects of, of domestic violence on amazon as well yes Thank you so much for sharing that. And as I mentioned earlier, y'all will see these kings again on the private room um, at different times. Um, I will definitely give y'all a heads up when I would like to do like a special episode um, dedicated to kings or, or to men's topics. So this is not the last time y'all will see them. It's just the last time it will be a regular ongoing panel, but you will see these kings again um, because this is something that I, I'm very, very, um, intentional about is making sure that men's voices are heard, especially on topics such as putting God first and household and running a family and so forth. And us ladies need to learn some things sometimes from y'all. So um, I think it's really important for us to, to, to continue this throughout the year for some, for some special topics. Um, TJ, you are last but not least, let's get your social media. All right. Well, my personal social media, Facebook, you can definitely contact me, TJ Austin on Facebook. Uh, also, Minister T Breeze on Facebook will keep you up to date with all my musical uh, events and all those type of things as an artist. Uh, also, Two Miracles Entertainment, the number two Miracles Entertainment on Facebook. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with all my business endeavors, photography, DJing, all those wonderful things. On Instagram, minister underscore T underscore Breeze, uh, as well as Instagram, two miracles, E-N-T. Nice, nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, being on with us tonight. Um, this is not goodbye. This is see you again soon in the future. And so I appreciate all of y'all for being on and taking the time to be here on the King's Table for the private room. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you, everyone, for watching and have a good night. Dwayne, you're going to stay on? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can take us off alive. Give us, give me one minute. We might have to come back in and go back out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We have to go back. I'm going to call you on Facebook uh, Messenger video. Okay. Okay. Thank you.